I felt good. Um, camp was great. Um, I want to thank the WBC for hosting me. Thank my, my manager, Al Heyman. Um, the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, they showed a lot of love. Um, you know, it was amazing. It was amazing camp. Um, I really don't know what the, the situation was, but, you know, when it comes to a fight, it's a fight. And that's what Jamal Charlotte comes to do. I'm, I'm out to fight the best in the world, obviously, um, being the number one. Um, contender right now, fighting for the eliminated. I feel great. So bring on the bigger names. Um, bring them on. I'm ready for them now. Um, not that I was never ready for them, but I moved up to the division to capture those names. So now, you know, they can't dodge me. And look, um, hats off to my opponent tonight. Um, he he was there to fight. He came in. He passed the physical. I don't understand what happened. I dropped him in what the second or first round and. Yes, he first round and he fell on his ankle. Um, it's unfortunate that that um, people would say that I didn't get a chance to fight, you know, a quality guy. But look, he was the number one in the world, and he was number one for two years. GGG avoided him for two years. I mean, I take that fight. I will show the people that I fight anyone. And look, I made it. Thanks to everyone who supported me. Questions? Jamal's. Let's start off with a big question. I know that Triple G and Canelo are fighting in September. There's talk you might have rematch calls. What happens if they're out, both of those guys are out for a year? Would you fight a Jacob? Would you fight some of the high profile names just to keep busy and not be on the sidelines for a year? Um, of course, I don't want to um, be on the sideline for a whole year. You know, That's not something I plan on doing. Matter of fact, I'm, um, me and my trainer talking now, we want to get right back in the gym and, and uh, even stay busy, you know. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not really one of the guys that pick the fights. I don't really do all that, but at the same time, um, I'm here to fight the biggest and the best people out in the division. Um, and if they don't fight me, if they, if they do happen to go out, whatever, um, whoever has the belt, I'm going to fight the person with the belt. Who would you fight in the Can they go ahead and have a rematch clause in Trump, pardon the expression, his, uh, his ability to be the mandatory and fight the next fight when they have to do something, I mean, compensate him in some way? I mean, they, they, or they could just elect to give up a belt. But if they do that, then he's going to fight somebody for the middleweight championship. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I don't necessarily expect the winner of that fight to be running to fight him. That's just my opinion, but would you? I've already talked to Abel, and he's already talking about, oh, we got nine months after we win the fight. So all he can do is get in the ring and keep winning. And that's, that's, that's all I can do. Business. I can just do my job, continue to put on great performances, um, and take care of the fighters that, that they present to me. Um, all the guys are going to be elite. Um, I'm at the top of my game right now, so I don't feel like they should put anyone in there that's, that's not of, of my caliber. So um, I'm here to fight the best in the world. There's a guy standing on that side in the hallway I had named Andrade, you know. They're, they're Move him up. You know, Move him up. Place him there. You know, they're, they're, it they're, is what it is. They're, they're guys. He, he moved up for 54, you know. There are a lot of fighters that have moved up for challenges and big fights. Like, I, I don't think, I mean, I, he'll, you'll see. This guy will fight anybody and, and, uh, and you know, he'll be back in the ring. We'll see who was that. So in a scenario where you couldn't get a Triple G or a Canelo fight, what about the winner of Willie Monroe? And Billy Joe Saunders. I want a belt. Um, thanks to, for the WBC, like I said, great people, um, great, great atmosphere when you come around great people. I mean, Billy Joe Sanders and um, Willie Monroe, if they're at the top of their game, I'm going to go get them. Regardless, I'm here to fight everybody who they say is the best. The naysayers, they, they doubt me no matter what. And so I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Just like it was for the, um, when I was at 154 pounds, I, I, was, I fought the top people in my division, you know, as long as I could. And now that I'm at 160, I'm really like shooting for the stars right now. How about somebody like David Lemieux? I'll fight David Lemieux. Bring him over here. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not dodging anybody. Like, like, it's a game plan that Ronnie Shields come up with. And none of them could beat it. None of them could beat it. I, and, and the God-given talent, my God-given power, speed, 
my abilities, I want to match up myself and challenge myself also. So like, you know, I'm here to, to fight whoever they, they give me. They, they give me and, and it makes sense, then we're going to make the fight happen. Jamal, how did you feel tonight at 160 compared to 154 for all the previous fights? Was your physical any different? Like a beast. It was a monster in there. Um, but you feel felt stronger good. than before? I felt good. I felt way stronger than I felt at 54. I didn't have to lose a lot of weight. Um, matter of fact, camp was even better. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, all around, like, when you, I feel like when, when things going the way it was going, it was moving so fast, um, I probably have to sit back and look at the, what, what happened, but you know, it was, a, it was like I said, a good camp, man. All the body punches are working perfectly. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling smarter, better, faster, stronger. Like, I'm, I'm that new Tommy Hearns at 160 pounds, and um, you know, when Vernon Forrest was at, at, at his peak, and I, I'm like the reincarnated Vernon Forrest, I was standing there.